LL221 Tel Aviv Tower. You are clear for takeoff on runway 21. Today is June 4th, 2020, the 12th of Sivan 5780, and this is Canadian Jewish Views. Part politics, part art, part culture, part Israel, all Canadian. On today's show, Gail Adelson Markovitz, President at Federation CJA, Robert Gauthier and Alison Steinberg at JVS Toronto, Tema Smith, inspiring activist, plus words of wisdom. LL221 Toronto Tower, you are cleared to land on runway 33 right. Welcome to Canada. Welcome home. I'm your host, Martin Sampson. Hi. Still in my basement. I'm just uh, catching up on some correspondence on my Underwood. Dear world, you are in turmoil. Anguish, fear, anger, disease, hopelessness seem to be everywhere. The anti-black racism that has dominated our consciousness this week piled onto the economic despair, itself dumped onto the pandemic, the situation is serious. If you're like me, you're searching for something to hold on to. I don't know where we're going, but as far as I can tell, the only way forward is together. And I don't mean hold hands around the campfire type together. We need way more than that. We need the type of togetherness where we roll up our sleeves where we realize that we have a common destiny that we can shape to all of our benefit if we just give each other more space to be different or to make mistakes or to hold different views. Our differences are eclipsed by our common interests. We have to get it together, people. To get through this, we have to cooperate. And to cooperate, we have to listen to and hear one another. We're going to explore some of these themes today, and we're going to hear some new perspectives. You'll also notice that this week we invited our friends from the black community to share their perspectives with us. Some of them are black and Jewish. The videos and written thoughts they sent are linked below in the show notes. As you may be able to tell, optimism was elusive and in short supply for me this week. But at the very moment that I was feeling particularly low, I spoke to our first guest, Gail Adelson Markovitz. She's a president at Federation CJA in Montreal. She's a passionate, dedicated visionary, and frankly, the type of leader that we're gonna need a lot more of to move us forward together. She reminded me of the importance of big C community. It's a powerful idea, and it's something that I think we can all hold on to. Let's hear from Gail. Whereas before the crisis, we had roughly 20% of the community in Montreal living below the poverty line, we're seeing that doubling now which means a doubling of needs. Um, so that is very, very worrisome. In a community that has been challenged for a number of years to support itself and, and the vulnerable amongst us. So that's a big concern. I think the biggest issue is um, concurrently food security and isolation. I think that that's gonna change as, as, the, as the landscape moves out into medium and long term. We all need to put on what I call a big C community hat right now and look at what are the most important problems we need to solve for. I think that most of us agree that first and foremost is people who are financially vulnerable, who can't, don't have enough to eat, who can't get their food and can't pay their rent. After that, we're looking at the, uh, you know, a real threat to Jewish identity and Jewish life, involvement in Jewish life. And so we need to support our institutions and our families who will no longer be able to access Jewish life. In Montreal, we've launched an exceptional two-year campaign with an understanding that, you know, sort of unprecedented times require exceptional action. And we need to secure $100 million to make sure that this community can not just get us through this immediate crisis, but, but move forward and resolve for, the, for all the issues that are coming in front of us, come through this crisis stronger than we were before. Not easily, but we do it. What I am most impressed with is all the organizations and our community partners who have reduced their overhead dramatically understanding that there are greater needs right now than any one individual organization. And that it's, um, it's a difficult situation, I think, for every community, but we all need to consider one another and keep our Jewish values close to our heart and remember that it's not just about our communities, it's about Jewish communities around the world. And I think today, for the first time in a very long time, we're all suffering in the very same way. Articulate, passionate, knowledgeable, Gala's vision, and she's deeply committed to ensuring the long-term health and well-being 
of your Jewish community. If you're looking for a way to help, consider making a gift to your local federation right now. Your generosity will help someone who's struggling while also contributing to the long-term well-being of your Jewish community. Ooh. Ooh, it's a little chilly in here. Canada in June, you never know what you're going to get. I need a sweater. Whew. Well, that's better. My mother, a woman whom I love very, very much, and frankly, to whom I owe everything, made it for me. It's like wandering around in the world wearing a warm hug from mom. Aww. Oh, this is a lake near my house that I go to sometimes. I wear the sweater there when the cool wind is blowing off the lake. It keeps me warm. I kind of wish I was there right now. Huh. Color me Dorothy. Sometimes wishes do come true. I don't think we're in Toto anymore, Kansas. You know, I often tell people that I come out here to commune with nature, to be part of the great outdoors, but I don't mind telling you fine people the truth. More often than not these days, when I come out here, it's to escape my family. Ah, oh, the call of the loon. There's nothing more haunting than the call of the loon. Except, of course, a middle-aged man weeping because he's been driven to tears by his prepubescent children who seem bent on his mental destruction. <laughs> now, in their defense, it turns out that kids need more social interaction than just their parents nagging them all day to get off their iPads. Who knew? Apparently, our next guests knew. Robert and Allison work at JVS in Toronto. They're here to tell us about a new UJA-funded program called the Parent Talk Hotline that parents can call and get advice from trained psychologists about distance learning, time management, anxiety, depression, all the things that are huge challenges for families at the moment. If you are a parent or if you know a parent, you may want to keep watching. As this crisis came about, a number of families moved from being out of the house constantly, having their children out of the house constantly at school and engaged with their friends, their peer groups, and in extracurricular activities, to having everything happen under one roof. We came up with the concept of Parent Talk, um, really because we wanted to give people a quick way to get in touch to some help and uh, reach out to someone who could provide a little bit of expert advice um, and, and support them as they were going through these difficult times. We're very grateful to UJA Federation who's providing funding for the Parent Talk Hotline through their emergency campaign. Parents can reach out and call the Parent Talk Hotline every Tuesday from 6 to 8 p.m. and every Thursday from 2 to 4 p.m. Some of the ideas that the psychology staff may provide to the parent would be things like maintaining structure because one of the things we know that will increase anxiety is a lack of structure. So as much as possible, maintaining bedtimes, maintaining rising times and meal times. The second recommendation that could be talked about in the, in the consultation in the Parent Talk Hotline is physical activity. It's incredibly important for children and families' mental health to be physically active. And finally, another strategy that would be talked about is the difference between social distancing and physical distancing. It is important to maintain physical distance, but it is important more so to have social connections. We're very grateful to Robert and Allison who gave us their time and to the whole team at JVS who are providing these free counseling services. They understand Big C community. This is Franck. Why it's pronounced Franck, I do not know. Though, I think you'll agree, it does add to his mystique. No one has done more for the Canada-Israel friendship than this handsome devil. We love him around here, and whether you know his name or how to pronounce it, 
If you believe in the work we do at CJA, educating Canadians about the role Israel plays in Jewish life and identity, then I suspect you love them too. Farewell, Frank. And remember, you can check out any time you like, but, well, you know. Okay, housekeeping. We want to hear your views. So here's the thing. Take out your cell phone, put it on the video setting, and take a selfie of yourself, 15 to 30 seconds, any topic you like, send it to us at views at cja.ca, and we will put the best ones on the air. And now here are some updates on the advocacy front. In the show notes below, you'll see a link to our statement in response to the Cromwell Report commissioned by York University in the aftermath of what was a very difficult situation that took place on campus last November. This week, CJ answered the call of BC Lieutenant Governor Jane Austen and signed on to the Different Together campaign, which asks us all to pledge to recommit to a very powerful Big C community idea. In Ontario, we've been advocating for more support for families through the Help Our Families Action Alert. You can participate, check out the show notes below. And federally, we continue to lobby for more resources for the charitable sector. We produced a guide that helps community agencies navigate government programs so they can access funding to continue helping vulnerable Canadians. If you want a copy of that guide, please email views at cj.ca. That's a small snapshot of what we've been up to this week. There's much more available about uh, what we're doing on our social media feeds and at cja.ca. Uh, this week, we also participated in Blackout Tuesday in solidarity with the black community, which by any objective measure right now is hurting and hurting badly. Here to tell us more about Blackout Tuesday is Tema Smith. She's biracial, she's Jewish, she has a huge heart. She's really quite an impressive community activist. For some people within the Black community, they are using it to take a rest. Um, it's just been endless emotions and anger and education, um, not just for a week uh, since George Floyd uh, was killed, but like for months and years before that. Um, and so a lot of the people who are doing that are using it as an opportunity to just like take a breather. For allies, um, who are white or who are non-black people of color the blackout was meant to be an opportunity to stop creating content and start listening to content so it doesn't mean get off of social media it means that if all of the white and non-black people of color stop posting then the content that is there to consume is the content from the black content creators who are sharing what's going on. On top of that, I think though, I think one thing I want to say is for the people who are choosing to participate from the non-black uh, community, just making sure that it's not the only thing you're doing, right? It's one thing to post a solidarity black screen and say like, look, I made a statement. It's another thing to actually use that time to learn and to be educated. And when tomorrow comes around, and you go back to posting photos, not act like it is uh, just another day and continue to listen and learn. Continue to listen and learn. Wisdom in brief from Tema Smith. Last week, are you sort of Jewish? You know, there's another way that I'm sort of Jewish. History has taught us repeatedly that if you wait long enough, someone somewhere at some time is going to start trying to round up the Jews. And when this man or woman and when this man or woman starts doing the sort outs he or she he or she is going to look at my body of work and my guess is that this guy or girl is that this guy or girl is going to invite me to join my jewish friends in that special corner of the yard think i'm kidding men and women like this exist and i know and to show you how I know, we have to travel in the Time Machine mailbag back to 2015 and a piece of correspondence that arrived in the CJ office that I was lucky enough to open. Came on a single sheet of paper in a banal white business envelope and it read, Dear Sir, it should have been six million and one, neatly signed with a red swastika. And all I could think was, finally, someone called me, sir. Ugh, you know you're an adult when. The world is complicated. There are bad people peddling hate. But they're no match 
for people of goodwill who join forces and roll up their sleeves under the banner of Big C Community. And by the way, to that guy or girl, I say, I got my money on the Jewish people. You may be in for a rude awakening. This was episode three. Let's try to be kind to each other, and we'll see you next week. Before we go, words of wisdom, distinctly Canadian wisdom, from Rabbi Zali Klayman of Beth Israel, which is Edmonton's family shul, and Rabbi Idan Sher, my good friend of Maktiki Hadass in Ottawa. Rabbi Klayman. Rabbi Sher. I've been wondering, um, have you ever been on the ice and had any sort of Jewish epiphany? Yes, actually, I have. Hockey has four lines, and each line makes a huge impact for their team. Every player really makes a difference. You know what? I think that must be why the greatest country on earth, Canada, loves the greatest game on earth, hockey. It tells the story of humanity. It tells the story of the Jewish people. Yeah. Every single person makes a difference. Every single person is important, and every single person has an opportunity to shine. Well, one more message for all the Canadians out there. If the 2020 playoffs would have happened, we all know who the champs would have been. Yes, I believe we do. Oh, touche. <laughs> Take good care, Rabbi Clayman. You too, Rabbi Sheriff.